I see all these things as gifts that are there for people, and they're always there, but you have to have the attention to actually see them. For me, the geodes are symbolic of these gifts that are in the earth. Not that they're gifts for us to take, they're there for our consciousness. I wanted to make that kind of feeling when people looked at them. This is part of our world. And look how beautiful it is. One of the words that Glenn Albrick was saying was psychoterratic. So psychology and terror on the earth. And I didn't like that at first because you think of the film Psycho or something. I find that everything that I have disliked, I always come back around to as something that really interests me. So I would say I'm Joy Creaves. I'm a psychoterratic artist. I wish my art would change the world. When I was probably about eight years old, I was drawing with my sister on the floor again. I guess that was our, our studio. And we had crayons and we were drawing horses. And my sister drew a brown horse and I drew a horse and I decided I wanted to make it really red. I wanted to make it as red as it could get. So I was packing the red crayon on and I was really happy with it. And then my sister looked over and she said, you can't make a red horse, horses aren't red. And that instant I realized the extreme power and freedom of art that, because I had already made it, so therefore, obviously you can make red horses. And that was such a revelation to me that I, I really think that from that moment, I understood what art could be and um, how important it is to know that you could do that. You could make a red horse <laughs> and then it exists after you made it. Since I grew up, I have um, not gone far off the beaten path, except I think conceptually, it, it's interested me to go off the beaten path, but physically, um, almost everything that I've done in my artwork is things that I've found in my daily life without going far at all. Like I said, most of the moss, well, all the moss that I'm drawing, it's from our backyard. Uh, there's that wonderful piece over there with the branch with the moss and lichens all over it. I mean, I was just walking the dog and that was on the street. There had been a storm the night before, and, and it was the most beautiful gift ever. I was always somebody that kind of couldn't see the forest for the trees. <laughs> so it's kind of deepened that, I think. When I was a kid, my, my father always saying, he, he always looked at my work and and um, he would always say, what are you trying to say? And I could never answer him. I was, I mean, it's just art for art's sake, or, you know, it, it doesn't have to say something specific, you know, but yet um, now I find that I do want it to say something that's more specific, at least, than it was then. Because it, uh, Sister Miriam once said to me, the world doesn't need another painting. And she, she doesn't remember saying that when it came up in conversation later, but she did say that and because she used to be an artist, actually. And, um, but what she meant I think was that we are in such a state of crisis and we need 
a sea change in our consciousness. And what are you doing if you're just making nice paintings? What are you doing that? What is that going to do for anybody? Um, so I think that's what she really meant by that. And so I, I still feel like I'm cheating because I enjoy making artwork so much and I'm not sure it's having this dramatic effect in changing the world, you know. I, I wish my art would change the world, but maybe there's a little trickle and it's changing people's consciousness one millimeter at a time, you know. Hopefully it has a little effect. An artist poem, <laughs> How to Make Gray. Sprinkle red from crushed rubies onto summer's moss green for the gray of a smooth river stone. Mix the yellow of a goldfinch with a purple sea of larkspur. Get the gray of a young moonlit night. Pour the blue of polished lapis into orange of swimming goldfish. See the gray of my love's unruly hair.